Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, with a topic about sex as from the point of view of an older woman. Hello, everyone out there. Happy New Year, and I hope everybody had an enjoyable Christmas or holidays whichever holidays you celebrate at that time and had a good time bringing in that good year with your family. I know that everything was basically bare to, and could not go out, but, you know, at least celebrating it with your loved ones is important and probably the only thing that you will need to celebrate I uh, saw a picture of Times Square, which was completely bare. Uh, missed the ball. But, you know, when we get back to whatever normal was, we can probably celebrate that at a later date, I guess. And they'll open back up Times Square. But over these holiday weeks, I hope you were still having holiday sex and fun with your partners. I'm assured a little bambinos around the way in some cases, which is congratulations. I think this is like the biggest baby boom going because we are stuck in the house and really can't travel to other states. And trust me, I tried. Totally forgot about the travel restrictions but was able to uh, change those plans. But anyway, enough about all of this. We made it through another year of holidays, and I do have to say that there were a lot, a lot of houses I saw that were lit up, and I think it was amazing and very nice to show that everybody still had that holiday spirit and were showing it. So that was really nice to walk to, uh, drive down a street and see like almost every house on the street. And it gave you the feeling of everybody getting together somehow, some way to get through with this. So kudos of you. Now let's move right along and go on with our topic of the day. Now, I'm assured we had a lot of role-playing over Christmas, people, or over the holidays, particularly Christmas, where you, you know, one dressed up in a Santa elf suit and the other one dressed up as Santa and played that all the way out to the bedroom and gave each other their gifts hoping that's not the only one, but hey, you had fun. So, on um, dressing up for Halloween, I mean, Halloween, wow, I'm so totally off. So, you know, the holidays as Santa or Santa's little helper, you know, you played that role play. 
we all know what role play is in the bedroom and it only stays within the bedroom but when you take it outside of the bedroom it becomes play and everybody knows that that is becoming quite popular but what is cosplay sex should you try it hey if you like that role playing in the bedroom take that role playing out of the bedroom and continue it because that is the difference between the two and obviously you all have fun and our biggest hollow hollow um holiday to dress up is halloween set on that day to get dressed up in your favorite um superhero suit or your favorite character suit but it is for that one night you know you admire where your these characters out there well now there are things out there that you can be that character play out that role not only in the bedroom but which is a turn on for everyone and it is through cosplay it actually um you know halloween is for all ages and we all know that you can get it's that pretend that you are doing that pretend to be somebody else and you can act that out without having to be you and you might feel a lot more dominant well, you might be okay because this is a character that you admire when you're playing. But you can take that uh, one night, th- you know, theme or dress up and channel it into your inner sexiness. And this is, you know, by dressing up in your favorite character or a favorite animal and this is done basically all year round there are a lot of conventions out there one of them is the furries and we all know what the furries are now it's become where that you portray that role which is cosplay no dressing as your character like an anime character or a superhero or something like that that you admire take that and play it out all day long and turn on that sexy until you get home and that's literally you know when you take on that persona uh, it's known as a cosplay and which is basically a short term for playing costume play so uh that's basically what it is and playing it a lot of people uh, love doing it because it kicks a little things up a little bit in the bedroom outside and inside and moving up into that sexual arena i know that in the conventions um they have it where you can it's like separated out and you can sit and talk or basically have adult play there because they usually have them in the hotel rooms um but this is where it's like you're taking that character okay you've gone out all day long and you're dressing up as this character this is you and now you're going into the bedroom and it becomes cosplay sex um what is it exactly Uh, i think you know it's basically defined as people bang while in character (laughs) it's similar to fantasy role play but with better outfits and more commitment so there's the difference there when you're doing um role playing it is only it's centered only on that one time in the bedroom and then the next time around you'd probably change that cosplay sex is you are playing that particular character all the time and you are acting in that manner even as sex you know calls for 
um, basically, you if you're going to engage in this type of fantasy or cosplay sex, basically coming up and saying, you know, let's pretend that, you know, if you're talking about, if you you have this character that you spoke like, let's pretend being in them. Um, and that is role playing. But with cosplay sex, you are actually, or you actually feel like you are that character from the get-go. You don't stop. You are that character that is who you are 24-7. You're living that life. Uh, you're not only dressed up as the character, you become the embodiment of that role uh, from foreplay to cl uh, climax so you play out that particular role throughout out of play foreplay the way up to that lovely orgasm there it's it's rising in population uh i don't think it's higher now than what it was years ago because it was behind you know, secret doors. Oh, you don't do that. You all knew what that was for. Why you were dressing up now. It has come outside of that and is played out. A lot, a lot, like I said, of conventions that are out there. And it's, it continues to rise in popularity. People in these events are where people engages like the standard co um, cosplay and there are those out there like the comic-con anime com conventions you can find out about these and just go online and research them if you want to take your role play a little further and because you like that and you might enjoy them and it's a sexual thing most conventions are held in hotels. You can stay, you know, make it where you stay in that hotel for a weekend or however long the convention is on and you stay in character, character all the time. And you know what? You might get to the end and say, let's go back to being us, you know, and do it that way. Always remember that. Granted, you're in this costume, but don't forget who you are and make sure that you still are very attractive as you are. These are very fun. It's very fun to do, I'm assured, but you have to, it is an equal balance because if you're a partner, the only way you can do this is if they're in character or you knew all of, or both of you are in character. So where do you go? That has taken you over completely. Um, yes, it is a nude role play, but I'm assured you're not the way. A lot of people ask, is this considered kinky or is it a kink? Absolutely. This is a lifestyle for many people and they live their lives this way, their house, their car, their uh, anything that they utilize is intertwined with how that cosplay character or their favorite character would do it. So they, it's where you come to the point where that, you know, they prefer to have, you know, these individuals prefer to have sex in character every time they have it, which brings me back to saying this is if this is something that you want to do, that's great. But if you are going to that point where you want to change it up a bit, just maybe one day do make sure that you are still attractive outside of the character. Um, if you, you know, really at the convention, a lot more people find it easier to hook up with somebody. Because unless the person you're with is already doing it and, it and likes it, most people will meet up 
at a cosplay convention and um want to keep having sex with them you know what i mean so this is where the, the bulk of the sex is really it is you as that character continue to want to have sex with them and then you realize they may expect that you'll both be in character of do you don't want that if it's not like if you if you just wanted a one night stand and you played that character all the way through you know and it was at the convention you met somebody well then go for it but if you go and if you're going to do that make sure that you can have a very good communication with that individual where you are laying out the expectations of that night because that right there that incident that moment where sex becomes involved and it's at the convention may just be you know you're going to leave there and go back to your life granted you're still playing a character here and there but you're playing now you really have to kind of sort of use that character in different thing you know different aspects because if you're going to work i think they're gonna look at you a little funny unless you work for nintendo or something like that where their characters is what you're playing hey more power to ya it's probably an awesome freaking job but you know you really need to communicate that with that individual that you're going to have sex with if you met up at the convention and you know both of you sit down with the expectations and lay them out so on that note we are going to take our first break in the show and when we come back we will continue with cosplay sex and continue on the different aspects and probably talk about some of the favorite costumes that people seem to like and get turned on by so go get that drink get a snack come back get relaxed and we will continue with more sex talk with audrey still on the search of that one true love on the limbo in this crazy world of dating marriage relationships well Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now, our topic today is cosplay sex, and, you know, it's role-playing, but continued role-playing, which has become very, very popular, and has gotten more participants in on the game i mean there are a lot of conventions out there now and we are going to continue with this topic and what exactly it is and should you try it also some characters that are quite popular and sexy considered sexy in cosplay that you might want to dress up as it can go anime to american to whatever country you want to come to wherever that um cosplay is but you know don't forget it's all about having some fun 
and knowing when you can stop and go back. Now there are some things that you need to know before trying it out. Generally with cosplay, a lot of people believe it's a little low-key. I think it's a lot more um, out there now. I mean, some countries like Japan, you go to Japan, they dress up as anime. That is their way of life and living the girls there. So with the facial makeup and how white they are, and, and this is an everyday occurrence, I'm assured that there are individuals out there that are doing the same here in the States. Uh, but obviously do not go to work like that unless the job calls for it. But through this, there are some scenarios that can get a little more intense in cosplay sex and just cosplay in general. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Pornhub. Now they have cosplay sex videos and there's a video that features Pinhead from the Hellraiser series. Everybody knows who he is for the most part. He's quite popular when Hellraisers came out. Very, very um, terrifying character. But it there are some, you know, when you're doing this, the harness that it, well, like some people will go out and get that harness. They even do up their face with the little pins and stuff that are in their head. If you're going to do it, go all out. But it is a very good, especially in this role playing area, agenda, arena, whatever you want to call it, to have safe words put out there for yourself and in place in advance before doing it. And this is way before that person takes that cosplay sex character and goes well beyond that. So yes, there are always times when you're trying something out new with your partner and you discussed it, you've got, you educated yourself on it and you know, you consented to it, but you have that little safe word right then and there. With this, if you're going out and you're meeting someone at the convention, you need to lay out the law about expectations and that there are going to be safe words. Because what if it, you, it can go beyond that. When you're living in cosplay sex or cosplay in general, you go, you kind of sort of put who you are on a back burner. So when sex, it becomes in sex, you kind of sort of take that character to how far that character can go during sex. So having all of those safe words in advance, very, very good thing. Is it right for you? Heaven only knows. It's, if you have an awesome, like a really full-fledged imagination, and it's active, and you've tried role-playing before, but just that one night of pretend is getting a little boring. You need to, and you want to try something much bigger. Get, you know, make sure that when you're with your partner, if they're enjoying that role-play, they may not enjoy it continued, you know, as you're playing that or them actually participating in that with you. They might say, okay, you can do it. And he, they find it sexy, your partner. And then right into the bedroom and they're going to get what they want. So there's ways of looking at this. If you have somebody who um, has that same imagination, that same interest, well then yes. You know, you go and do it. And you continue it. Cosplay sex can be extremely fun and also very satisfying to both you and your partner to 
to try it out. You might even like it so much that you will continue with it, try out the conventions and grow with it, but also remember who you are and coming back. But remember that if there's any part in it that you're partaking that you feel uncomfortable, it's that's the point where it's not becoming that role play or that fantasy anymore. Um, so you need to get up and just say, eh, let's stop here. You know, it was fun up until this point. Take that out. We can continue. And it could be right. You were ready to get in, you know, hit orgasm and then boom. That's what happened. You never really know. Uh, it is something that you need in that, in knowing that. Because role playing, if you're only, you know, role playing is in the bedroom. Oh, wear something sexy, honey. And you wear this. And then when sex is done, okay, you put them back into the drawer. Cosplay is these individuals go out and construct their own um, suits that mirror their character and they're playing that role constantly so when sex becomes involved you're actually not having sex with your partner you're having sex with the character as in that first time it might just be that much fun but then it may just get a little out of control and you don't want to get to that point so that's where you need to know where that safe word is going to come in and you are able to stop that so and cosplay sex I'm assured is very fun and they do cater to it at the conventions and everything like that so if you researched it most likely because of how they became so famous um you will find in the the plans of the convention like one room or one area that you can go in and actually act it out and becomes more sexual but it's completely up to you if you're going to do that because uh, like I said, it's got to be something that the both of you are very comfortable with and know when to start and when to end it. So you don't want to always get to, you know, you don't want to have that. Are we going to stop? That? Oh, how do I get this person to stop? It's going too far. So you got to know, have that safer, communicate those expectations while you're there. I mean, it might just be something that you and your partner do when a convention comes in to town you plan for that convention you stay there you make sure your phones are off and you're not you know you have nobody interfering with you during that weekend so that you can play out that character and not have any interruptions for the entire three to seven days i would presume and then once you're done you, you put it away and you go home and you become you know, Joe and Susie Smith. Who's to say? But cosplay sex is can be really fun. It can spice up your love life. Because it's that extreme role play on costume play. And bringing that into the bedroom and playing it out throughout, from after playing it out throughout the day. Could be just what you want and how you how you do it but you need to know what those barriers are so now i mean you want to enhance your sex life and embrace your true self with cosplay okay it is a subculture and it is thriving uh, it is really not rare at all to see cosplay enthusiasts going um, to all different kinds of lengths 
in order to have complete submersion of themselves into the cosplay world. Uh, it is not cosplay sex is not a shocker due to this because this is where it comes in it's a lifestyle it's a subculture everybody's playing the same roles and when you're playing out those roles if you pick the character who is a sex fiend well obviously you're going to be playing out that character if you're single and you're going to these conventions just to hook up with a bunch of people have an orgy in cosplay make sure you communicate that and you know what's going to happen what's the safe word and all that good stuff if it's you and your partner and the both of you are into the cosplay and you're going to these conventions and or even at home and you're playing out the cosplay characters that you've picked well then you can have sex in all different places because the both of you are in agreement with it but you still should have i have a safe word really find out about the character before you start playing the character because the character may look very very cool especially with animes animes are very sexual um their characters are have a very a huge back sexual con um backdrop on them so uh uh, in Japan is very is much more comfortable in their sexuality for the most part we are getting there <laughs> but and but we're not fully there yet so so you know before you really get into talking about all of this and we get really deep into this there's uh little journey through the cosplay world where a lot of people do not know what it is like i said i gave a small definition He's put to me two uh when two words are put together to make one like smoke and fog equals smog and like little things like that so obviously costume play is where it comes from just you know going over that it was this term actually was created in 1984 so it's been out there for a little while the person who actually made up the name is nobayuki i'm probably saying that wrong uh takahashi and he wrote uh an article in a japanese magazine and it was called anime so look it up and it really was about encouraging attendees of these cosplay uh sex conventions and things like that uh it encouraged the attendees of, of various like science fiction conventions and to basically embrace dressing up as a uh in a costume now a lot of people know about king richard's fear I'm just putting this one out there. This is a subculture and it is somewhat of a cosplay. With this is your the period for which you're dressing up is is all around. So everybody's dressing up in the same period garbs, costumes, cosplay. So that is I think where the difference comes in when it comes into character cosplay, you're taking on the persona of that when you're in like king richard's fair excuse me you are taking an persona of like the wench or the king the queen the jousters but you're really you are taking them on but once you leave there everything stays there a lot of people will still probably dress up like that and they probably take you to a cosplay um convention who's to say that's completely up to them but cosplay is japanese and despite the fact that at, when there as that time see like i explained earlier jap 
uh, Japanese or Japan, the individual, you know, people who live there are no strangers to wearing the costumes. They actually wear it out. And this is their daily, um, thing to them. This is part of their living. They do do masquerades, but it's more there where they come, they're doing it more. It's their way of life. They get up and this is how they dress. If you watch any Japanese uh, videos on makeup or whatever, the in, the the woman in the, the picture or in the video or even the man in the video, they are very well versed with just this is what their daily routine is. And, but it was found, and going back to the article, that this article actually really helped. Um, the idea of cosplay to gain a lot of traction and popularity. And it actually led to the world's first cosplay summit in Japan, which was in 2013. Uh, obviously, today, we have uh, a lot of ins cosplay inspirations out there. Like I said, there's the anime, there's regular cartoons, there's comic books, there's manga, there's TV shows, video games. We have so much of a variety out there. There isn't one particular way that you should dress, you know. And this is really for, like, there's really no way that particular way that you're supposed to dress to be considered cosplay. You pick who your character is. A lot of these costumes are very, very elaborate. And they do have uh, co uh, costume contests. And you've got to see these people. I mean, Yaya Han. She's one of the big ones in cosplay world. She, and she has her own branding out there. She now has patterns. She now has her own product line that you can buy to make cosplay costumes. And on that note, we are going to take a break. And when we come back, we will finish this lovely cosplay sex up and how much fun it can be in dress dressing up. So, to me, Lee, up to you if you want to go replenish that drink and that snack. If you're imagining your uh, character right now and what they can do for you sexually continue on and get to where you want to go get to that orgasm but I am going to take a break and I'm going to meet you back here for more sex talk with Andra after that break Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, 
Andra, where the topic about sex is in the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back. And for those of you who did not go anywhere, I hope we are getting to you where you need to be. Because we are going to continue on with our topic of cosplay sex and cosplay overall to be successful with it because it is a subculture and it is an everyday lifestyle and if you just want to do it at a convention for that weekend and then you go back to who you are that is fine but it is a little bit more intense than Halloween and a little bit more intense with just regular role play in the bedroom cosplay is taken throughout everything in character from the foreplay the outer play the orgasm and all of everything in between now cosplay costumes are very very elaborate and they vary from simple little outfit to really elaborate high detail costumes like i said yaya han is one of the major players in that and she's been doing this for years. She now has her own line of patterns and products to accompany those patterns in order to make cosplay customs. So remember that. They, and they are out there in Joann's and Michael's Crafts and things like that. So don't think that they are not there. I, I've walked by them in Joann's. So I know they're there. Now, they make up even the armor, the swords, the staffs, the weapon of whatever it is that uh, character has. Now, there are a few examples that are really often depicted, which is that of Laura Croft, Wonder Woman, Holly Quinn, uh, Morpheus, Spider-Man, Iron Man stormtroopers uh with anime and like things like dragon ball z or Yu-Gi-Oh and things along that line you'll see with the men but you mainly see more of the women who are dressed and very voluptuous and they do not slack in the boobage area so now they're there is a point where there is blurring the lines of cosplay and sex, believe it or not. You having sex while you're dressed up in character, there is where a lot of people will argue that it's the same as role playing or fantasy play, but that really isn't true it isn't necessarily true yes you are dressing up and then having sex but role playing as described by a sex therapist mind you is more so the act of pretending to be someone or to create a scenario cosplay on the other hand is actually feeling as though you are that character I'm just reiterating what was said in this. I went over briefly in the first segment of the show. It is seriously considered a kink. And obviously a lot of people who are in characters, total turn on. They want to have sex every single time they are in that character. So remember that. How's it enhance your love life? Well, or your sex life, because this is what we're trying to enhance. Cosplay in the bedroom. It's considered to be a great and extremely erotic pra um, practice. And it's based on your imagination. So it can turn up your sex life. If you want to experiment with different sexual identities in the bedroom, you could take the different characters that you play and one one day be this character, the next day be that character. Uh, or if they have an alter ego, you can play both parts on different days. 
and sex play them you know be that character during sex and it's really what's going to work for the both of you uh there was a few uh, one doctor actually interviewed individuals who uh took their cosplay sex life and discussed it so uh, one was a tattoo artist and he talks with his girlfriend i guess the girlfriend dressed up as poison ivy at a new york comic-con some years back um but with that his sexual turn on to her he was drawn to her more than usual because he has a very strong sexual attraction to his girlfriend overall but her playing this uh in the cosplay role up the ante so he just would want uh to just to have sex with her all the time while she was in costume i mean they, you, they individuals who make their own costume spend hours upon hours creating these costumes so they are very very particular in getting every detail correct so imagine that the fact that with the detailing of the costume and then they put the makeup on and the hair wig whatever or they even color their own hair how they are now that character role playing is you can go get a french maid's outfit throw it on you're not becoming anybody else you're just playing out that role cosplay is now you are that character and when it comes to sex you into you kind of work it in what would say poison i redo during sex wrap her vines around you probably wrap her vines around your penis or erotic asphyxia with her vines she might just tie you up with her vines and have some kind of plant juice or something so this is where that cosplay sex comes in and that cosplay role um there was another couple from new york again who cosplay is really big in their lives and they actually met online and then they'd be in chatting and finding out where different things were with regards to uh they shared an interest in video games and then she dresses up in the outfits and they really turn him on so he goes out there and actually wants her to do this but she doesn't have a problem with it because this is her alter ego persona is this character so it's a tool and an interest and it basically helps couples to bond together uh it also is a way to increase sexual arousal and keep the things a bit creative interesting ongoing in the bedroom because one night the ca- the character could be the alter ego and the alter ego does something different i mean prime example superman we all know who superman is he's clark kent too who's a newspaper uh reporter so you got to you could play out so many sexual roles with that and as clark kent and then you can do out uh sexual roles with superman because you are playing superman so with cosplay sex there seems to be such a limitless limitlessness to the sex and what you can do in the bedroom um and you can get even more kinkier if your partner is into it as well uh and that is both inside and outside of the bedroom now you get obviously dressed up to get undressed have cosplay sex maybe working your costume with a 
crotchless bottom, you can stay within them. And, you know, it's always, why would you go that far to dress up that elaborate to have the outfit taken off for sex? Well, it is the costume that is part of the sex. And it makes you look at it a little differently. Now, there are different kinds of, like, uh, lingerie, latex, and props that are used during sex. Um, but this is a kind of foreplay, which goes beyond just that little lingerie, just that, you know, that sex. Uh, it enhances the sexual experience. So pick out your character, because we all had a character that we had a comic book come out. Stanley, he was amazing. Um, anime has become extremely popular, and if you watch anime cartoons, you will see. I mean, you can go on to Google, Google Anime Girl, and you can see how they are perceived and how sexually and how so they're very very sexual japan is very comfortable with their sexuality it is taking on a character which allows you to feel bold sexy and attractive as that character because come on laura croft every guy loves laura croft she was she's such a and when angelina jolie played her, I think it made it even more of that turn on for them. Um, and it, it, it builds that fuel, that sexual tension, that sensual, oh my God, I gotta have you out of you and makes it, it intensifies it even more. What kind of costume can you pick? Well, obviously, if you're a newbie to the cosplay sex scene and cosplay overall, obviously you're a little shy, a little apprehensive. Here are a few things, you know, there are other people who have been out there. You know, you have to prepare yourself mentally and physically for cosplay sex. Now here's some few things that you can go by and use because this is something new for newbies, obviously. You can go to a burlesque show for inspiration, which burlesque shows are awesome. And you can even watch them on, now you can't go to them, but you can watch them on, t on um, stream and video and all that good stuff. Uh, you can watch a strip tease to help you get that self-confidence. You can do a strip tease for your partner. Which, obviously, is not a big thing, but people, some people are still shy, you know. Um, do a lot of research on the character, which will help you to feel powerful and sexy. Also attractive and confident, because the more you learn about that character and being that character, and you're taking on that persona, you can forget your shyness. Um, you need to find a character that makes you feel powerful and that really turns on your partner at the same time. So we are talking about sex here, so your partner's got to get something out of it. I doubt you're dressing up as sludge, although I can't say that because there's probably somebody out there that actually finds that extremely sexually turn on. So pick something that helps no, makes you feel powerful and confident, but also turns on your po uh, partner. Now you wear a costume that is not too hard to get out of. Because if you get in it and your partner can't get you out of it, well, I think that defeated the whole purpose. <laughs> if you can't get out of it and your partner can't get you out of it, there are a lot of issues there. Uh, and really, after getting this costume and doing all of this, Go to a sci-fi or a Comic-Con or cosplay convention to see how these cosplay individuals are in action. Because you will learn a lot from them 
and they can help you as well. You can get ideas for your costumes, um, compliments, things like that, and it will help you to come out of that shell and you learn a lot. And on that note, we are going to take the last break in the show. Yes, it is the last break. And when we come back, we will finish up with how to, you know, basically get into cosplay and working that into sex. And then I'll go over some other popular outfits or costumes or cosplay characters that people love to dress up in that you will see a lot of. And it's not uncommon to go to a convention and there is more than one Stormtrooper or there's more than one Laura Croft. This where, you know, you can't go in there thinking, oh, I'm going to be the only one dressed like that. Everybody else is dressed like that. And you could probably get ideas from them as well. So, on that note, let's take that break. Uh, completely up to you. Hopefully you are in the middle of getting yourself off. So, stay right where you are. And I will meet you back here for the final segment in the show after the break. So, mm, Stay tuned and stay there. Stay comfortable. And Andrew will meet you back here for more sex talk. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Our topic is a cosplay sex, the extreme role play, the subculture, the turn on, and we are going to pick up where we left off, so I hope all of you are comfortable, hands in pants or not, or your partner's hands in your pants, whichever you prefer. Now, you say dressing up in costume, what's the appeal? What is the appeal? It's obviously not a new concept. It's been around a lot longer than cosplay itself has. But really, what is it about dressing up in cosplay costumes that are or is appealing? Well, one reason why it is appealing is because cosplay lovers are able to find their quote-unquote tribe by attending cosplay events and dressing up. They're able to connect with others who share the same interests and passions whilst exploring the idea of connection and identity. However, there is, on the other hand, cosplay lovers may just simply love the idea of being creative. It's when you are dressing up in your character that you like and you want to be your imagination just runs wild on how you see that character, not only as who they are on wherever you saw them, but how you are interpreting that character. Um, just having the love 
for of being creative, exploring your talents, especially in the costume making, you know, the design and the fantasy. Really, this is what I'm saying. It's like you, you take on that character and how you see that character. Everybody has different ways of looking at something. So when you're looking at your character and you're maybe looking at them for their sex appeal because you want to turn on your partner, well, you are going to make that costume and dress accordingly. So now there are some other additional things that are appealing, which uh, innovative cosplay costumes have a tendency um, to receive a lot of praise and attention, obviously, when going to these conventions, like I said earlier, you if you're a newbie going there in your costume, you learn new things. If you are a uh, person who's been doing cosplay for ages and you, you know, sex, you've worked it already, already into your character, but you want to go a little further, you learn these things at the convention. Uh, when you're being asked for a photograph, a lot of people who are just there and they're going there, they're not in costume because they, maybe this is their first time or the person that they're with is in costume. And because they, with the furries, they have the individual who has done their animal costume, but they have difficulty seeing out of the eyes. So you have to have a handler, which will be the person that you trust to guide you around. And that's what it is. So basically, you have a pet now, especially a dog. What do you do? You have it on a leash. You bring it for a walk. It's the same thing. Um, so being asked for a photograph because they admire the costume that you did for your cosplay uh, will get you to engage in a chat with that individual. And it gives you that little bit of bonding and feeling hot. And because you're in the spotlight, they're, they're focused on you. You look really good. They want to know. Um, and that's where it comes to. Because cosplay encourages that exploration of sexuality and gender. You know, and it puts you out there. You're experimenting with that fantasy and dress up really is is a great outlet for your creativity, your self-expression, but also many individuals in the LGBTQ community plus community um, can really explore and, and they're able to create their own gender. You can do the same even if you are not in that community. Maybe there's a character that you really, really like. Problem is, it's a female character, but you want a male counterpart. Design your costume that way to change the gender. What would that, co you know, that cosplay character look like? And then play it out in sexual. You could take that male persona and go into the bedroom with that. Um, you're, you're taking on different roles of characters, the opposite sex, the, the, it's really what seems powerful, interesting, and cool about that character is what you are taking on. Um, how, if there are those individuals where the process really of enjoying cosplay actually learns about the different genders involved in that sexual orientation and that identity. Like I said, if there's a character that you like, it's a female. And you want to explore the male side of that. Alter your, your designs and imagination for that and play it, that character out that way. And you could bring that in to the sexual uh activity of the sexual play and role while you are in that character um a lot of these conventions for individuals who are you know kind of fighting with their sexuality or with that sexual portion a lot more out of the sex through that character 
actually able to feel really comfortable at these conventions and they're able to uh, feel included and to embrace it and be able to come out and feel like this is that first place where they actually feel they can be truthful about who they are and what they you know their sexual desires are a lot of people will play those out with you there so obviously the downside to all of this is the fact that if you get wrapped up in it way too deep you probably lose your identity your self-identity and you won't be able to pull yourself out of it so give yourself a time frame or when and where you're going to do this and when you're going to get back to being who you are basically um just really go out there and find out about you and how you want to express you uh in regards to a a cop you know going out there and taking on that character that you've always eyed for the longest time and then work it work it out you know it's what it is and how you perceive it and how you bring it on so you know go ahead and do it because you, you are in that community that subculture so with that all being said if this is what you want to go and try do look all of these uh cosplay sex cosplay costumes all of these things that are out there look them up on the internet because they it's on there you know it's such a it leads to that better sex in the bedroom because you are taking on that different you just need to know when to separate from it you know like i said if you go there's a weekend and there's a convention well you could take that connection that convention and turn off your phone or whatever and totally be engulfed in it on that weekend if it's for a weekend in those three days and you're living that character or you're not living joe or susie uh and then when you the it is over that persona goes in you might like the two of you might want to just go back home dress like that have out a sex fest in the bedroom and then put them away your choice you know now i'm just going to give you some unique cosplay ideas like i said earlier a lot of the cosplay is girly related so you can take this into where you want it to be uh but the first one obviously off the list is miss holly cohen she is she has become such the big sex idol especially after uh, her debut in the movie which was a very a good movie so uh she's very very sexual she's very in you know who she is she's got um short pants and everything like that the little hot pants so there you go next one obviously is wonder woman all a time favorite new and old linda carter brought it to the world and updated versions are absolutely amazing the new movie absolutely amazing some people like that strength of the amazon woman and that's the only way they can express that strength in their lives so there are a lot of out ideas out there for beginners do go out there and find out jessica rabbit is another good one roger rabbit i know all you men are jealous of him because he has jessica rabbit and she is such the uh sex figure and everybody you know women it used to be barbie now we have jessica's you know rabbit there so get out that big giant push-up bra ladies another one which is an anime character out of japan which is sailor moon um granted they're like kids on there i think but 
the idea of her suit is very sexually alluring and uh it invokes that personality and there are like four different Sailor Moon characters is Sailor Moon herself and then her counterparts which is uh she's the red uh there's the blue there's the green and I believe there's yellow I'm not sure yeah because it's red green blue and yellow well I can't be held to that one but I'm most positive it is then you've got the and this is exactly where changing from maybe the female to male and the male to female of a character which is the female version of Captain America now I know Spider-Man the character they brought out and uh, they had all different you know across dimensions all different styles that they brought out in that movie uh, of Spider-Man they had a female they had a I think a pig uh, they had all different kinds of Spider uh, Spider-Verse so that's where you can look into that they started to open it up uh, and an older one which was brought out by Irma Thurman which is Kill Bill everybody just thought she was amazing uh, she is another costume which you can you know basically work out the way you want it to go sex figure there you go uh, cute little costumes which everybody loves Pokemon and Pikachu would be that and you can turn it into a female anime cosplay uh, costume make it sexy the little tail you know the whole the body part you can do different really how you want it. make it really whimsical and fun obviously we have the princesses which is snow white you know sleeping beauty and all of that if you want to play it out uh, because there's always an innocent with that we have uh, the female version which there were females there but Keanu Reeves was the main guy in Matrix um, reloaded that costume changed over for female um, Pennywise is a male but there is the female you know switching it over to female and having the female version of Pennywise being whimsical again and you know bringing that character alive uh, Denrius I believe that's how you say this name and she's from the Game of Thrones and obviously the, the white hair the flowing gown and the innocence of it uh, the gracefulness of that character which is uh, pretty hot to people because it's a goddess obviously we're back to the princesses with what is always a always looked at good princess costume is Aladdin Jasmine but especially the one where um, she is kidnapped the red one the red outfit by Jaffa that he dresses her in very very popular we have Mickey, Minnie Mouse come on gotta have Minnie in there Minnie is a sex symbol to most and that can be very much whimsically done up now we you know we have the Mortal Kombat Katana uh, very seductive all in black uh, she has her fans which are her knives when she battles on um, her weapons and it she's sexy right then and there and most people will take that because she is kicking she's a, uh, the ultimate femme fatale you know what I mean she's actually a beautiful character and bringing that out in cosplay there you go there's that power uh, Queen of the Nile always a favorite Cleopatra has always been one of the top costumes out there that uh, is worn on Halloween so why not up it a little and bring it in to the cosplay scene Pokemon trainer we're back to the Pokemon 
now that's either female or male but it is out there you make it what you want uh, and then there's the customizable slave Leah Leah how you say it um, and this is a very popular design for cosplay very very sensual very it's only three pieces and you can buy these and uh it's almost she's dressed like almost like a belly dancer to an extent and she's wearing the collar with the chain for that you know submissive portion there's a 10 piece to it there's a three piece to it um and it's from the the return of the jedi which most people uh know that and on that those are just a few ideas which you can swap to wherever you want it however the slave leah uh i don't know how a guy's gonna pull that one off but hey go for it all the others you can work them in that's you know you can take that identity of sexuality and turn it around these costumes and these personas are very very alluring and very very sexual which will really turn on the sex romp in the bed that foreplay is heated up the outer play in the overall orgasm of it so on that note i am going to have to say we at the end of my show for today and we are going to um thank you very much for you know as usual let's go with the usuals with you know before you try something new educate communicate consent and uh after that you know always practice safe sex if not for you but for your partner and vice versa i do thank you for uh turning tuning into the show today but again i thank you for tuning into the gsmc sex podcast which is brought to you by the gsmc podcast network i ask that you do subscribe to the show and then write a very nice review please and thank you and also please seek us out on facebook twitter and instagram because we are there like us hit that little thumbs up there or that little heart like us there and leave a comment please maybe things that you want to hear on the show this helps not only me but it helps the gsmc podcast network so with that being said have an awesome sex in the new year and have an awesome sex night bye bye for now you've been listening to the golden state media concepts sex podcast part of the gsnc podcast network you can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast.